All right, everybody. So I just want to show you guys a little tweet that I made after playing in the alpha for about the second week's alpha, weekend alpha. It's probably about 14 hours. And then the first weekend, I remember I was in Italy, so I only got to play, um, what was it? Maybe like six hours. I only got to play one day. I enjoyed the first weekend. I also enjoyed this uh, next weekend, the second one. Um, but after playing it for a while, I definitely have a lot of things that I'd like to see uh, improved slash worked on slash added. And uh, that's basically what this tweet is. So some of you guys have probably already seen this, but I just wanted to go over it on stream for a YouTube video so you guys can kind of see some of my thoughts about what they can do to improve it because there's been a lot of Doomer takes lately for Smite 2. And, um, you know, I just, I just love the game. I have a passion for Smite. So I want to see the game improved. I want, to, I want it to do well. So these are some of my thoughts on it. It begins with, I got sidetracked yesterday and didn't make a post about things I'd like to see in Smite 2 after playing the second week in Alpha a Bunch. Alpha Bunch. I said this because I was going to make a post on Saturday um, after I made like a, like I was just talking about like some of the negativity and stuff like that. It's another tweet. That's for a different video or you can just go read that if you want. But um, yeah, this isn't a pros and cons list. Just things I like to see change, improve slash added. And some of these are ambitious and will take more time than others if they were to be implemented. So keep that in mind. And some other things are actually really simple and I think could instantly make the game better. Um, so yeah, first and foremost, work more on the melee characters. Every ranged character I played actually felt pretty polished, till some work for sure, but the melees, especially Bologna, Odin, and Fenrir, felt clunky and they kind of bug out constantly. Um, especially Bologna, a little bit more so Odin. Fenrir, I actually had some decent games on him and he felt pretty good, but it did feel like a lot of the, the ranged characters were actually pretty well polished. I think it was a bit of a hyperbole and exaggeration by people saying all the characters feel like shit. Because I, I, I played like Sol, Neath felt really good. I actually feel like Neath feels better in Smite 2 than she does in Smite 1 even. Um, especially with a couple of the changes they made to her kit. Um, but yeah, it felt more so like the, the melee characters. Although some of the Guardians definitely felt nice. Bacchus felt good. Um, I think Odin felt fine. I don't think I ever actually, or not Odin, um, Ymir, sorry. I don't think I ever actually played Athena, which is kind of funny. But um, she just didn't seem that enticing. They didn't really do much to her kit and make her fun so uh yeah so that's definitely one thing they should prioritize more working on the melee characters so they just seem like they need a little bit more love so that's something that they could kind of instantly change and and the game would be better um next up we have just more god changes i've been preaching this on my stream for a while now in fact i'm about to mention it but we've been going over a god doc where we're making at least one change to every character in the game just trying to spice them up make them fun while trying to retain the essence of every character's kit and, uh, you know, make it so that the mains that are transferring over from Smite 1 to Smite 2 are still happy with the gods that they put so much time into, but they still feel fresh and fun and add a higher skill cap to them, but not a higher skill floor, if that makes sense. They're still easy to play, but just harder to master, which I think every character should be going for for the most part. So, um, we want to get people excited about the whole new engine, like with the Hades change. That Hades change is really cool. It gets people excited to play him. I think most people agree with that. In my opinion, every character should feel fresh going into Smite 2. You can capture the essence of their, essence of their Smite 1 kit while adding cool new mechanics and combos for them. We've been working, and like I said, we've been working on a doc. So, yeah, if you guys want to see that, um, if this is up on YouTube, we've been doing this a lot lately on stream in queue. We've just been coming up with and brainstorming changes for characters. Um, so if you have cool ideas for stream, or for, for gods on stream, then stop by. Um, but yeah, this is a big one. I think a lot of the, a lot of the things, like people... At first, weren't really feeling this, but you definitely see it more now. People are like, I'm literally just playing, you know, Soul, but on Smite 2. There's, like, no changes. Or I'm literally just playing Athena. Like, what, what's even enticing me to try it out? But if you, like, add some spiciness to the kits um, and add some differences so people can be, like, get excited to actually hop on Smite 2, I think it's, like, a, a really positive thing to go for. And plus, it's a new game. Like, you want, you want the new game to feel different. Um, people, Smite 1's still going to be up for a while, so if people really want to play those old kits, they can go back to it. But I just don't think they will if you still capture the same kit while adding more fun and uh, different aspects to them. So that's a big thing. This is also something they can immediately do. Um, I think they should stop just doing a one-to-one -one port with a lot of the character kits and actually adding some more stuff. So next up, another thing that you can instantly change to make the game better. They can add neutral camps to fight over instead of the gold chalice and warhorn. They don't have to be boring smite one camps either. Maybe add a cage aspect to the solo one. This is just a spitball idea where no one else can enter until the camp or one of the soul laners dies. So it's just like a 1v1 cage that you have to fight it out in or get the camp so you don't have to die. Explore the interact mechanic more. In the future, it could be used for taking a Janus portal, picking up a Cupid Heart. I remember talking to the devs at Worlds, and I think this is actually the reason for the interact. They're going to add some stuff like that in the future, where you can actually interact with the map or the game itself with characters' abilities. Um, right now, though, the Warhorn and the Gold Chalice, these are very, very um, soulless and just kind of silly. They need It needs to be something else. It needs to add a fun and personality 
to it for now. Should be a reward for doing something, not just walking over and clicking it. Yeah, that's basically what it is. Like, you, you just need to reward people for actually playing the game and doing something worth doing. Um, and, you know, just walking over and clicking space bar is just... Like, you gotta be more creative than that. And I know it might have just been a placeholder, but the game's about to be in beta, and you need stuff to entice people to play the game, and that's definitely a key point where they can already um, make the game better. And it would, it would literally take no time at all, because if they really wanted to, they could literally just pour it over the camps for now. Um, but then, you know, like I said, they need to add some personality, add some some funness to it. Um, that's just one idea that came up, like, top of my head. It's actually an idea I've had for a while, where it's like a 1v1 type thing. Uh, for either a god kit or just like in the map itself, but you can add some other stuff, you know um, Just try and get creative with it and if it's unbalanced it's unbalanced, but at least at least it's gonna be more fun that way Another thing they can instantly do they need to go even further with the active items They need to make some crazy ones and I mean this genuinely Screw balance a bit now some of you guys are gonna think ah balance balance It's an early alpha in a new game the most fun I had this weekend was abusing the broken soul devour It was absolutely crazy. It was a soul reaver on crack and you need to get a little wonky with them. The problem with OP things, in my opinion, is when there's only one or two options for the OP things. If there's a lot of them, then everyone can have fun. You can build try out multiple OP active items. Um, one of the coolest ones I saw this weekend was the one that makes you big. It literally increases your size. You guys saw the Amir clip of me too, two shotting that Neath. Like stuff like that that changes your character model, changes the map a bit, just things that um, they're just interesting, you know, and you need to do that with a lot more active items because a lot of the active items, again, felt a little soulless and felt like one-to-one -one ports over from Smite 1 items, which is fine for some of them, but um, I still think you can get more creative with it and add some some pretty cool ones. Um, and, you know, use other games for inspiration if you need to. And then I said right here, add a Season 5 Tier 2 Glad Shield as an active item with a 20-second cooldown. What I mean by that is, you know, Tier 5 or uh, Season 5 Tier 2 Glad Shield was the one that healed you for every ability you hit on an enemy god for 2.5%. They should add that as an active item for fun. As a throwback, people will enjoy it. It'll be a fun thing to test out. And you can just add it like a 20 second cooldown. So you pop it for the next 5 seconds. Every ability that you hit on an enemy god will give you 3% health or something like that to maybe buff it a little bit. And if it's a Tier 3 item. So something like that. You know, that's just a, a small example as a nice little throwback. Entice people to play the game more. Big one, another thing they can instantly do. A lot of these are not as ambitious as I thought, I guess, because some of these you can just instantly fix. They need to brighten up brighten up the map a bit. I saw a lot of people complaining about this. It just felt dark. It felt a little bit um, almost like unsmite-like. You know, Smite's more of a cartoonish MOBA, um, and the graphics are a lot cooler in Smite too, and I like that, but it definitely is still a little bit dark. Um, and at the very least, I said they should adjust the brightness scale at the beginning of launching. You know how every game, when you first launch it, it has this brightness scale where it's the left image shouldn't be visible, the first one or the middle one should be slightly visible, and the right one should be perfectly visible or something like that. If you did it correctly and made the left one invisible and the middle one slightly uh, visible, it made the game super dark. So they at least need to adjust that because I think it threw a lot of people off when it came to brightness. Um, so yeah, that one, instant fix. It'll help uh, liven up the game even more so it's not as dark. Another quick fix, they need to show the word, line, word outlines on the map. In Smite 1 right now, when you place a word on the map, it's very easy to see where it's showing the vision. Um, it's very clear, but in Smite 2, it's not clear at all. It's very tiny. First of all, a UI editor will help with that. You can make the map bigger, so that'll increase in, uh, um, that'll just make that better in general. Um, of course, I didn't mention that in my post, but a UI editor will be really good, and actually, they should probably prioritize doing that as well. But um, just for now, at least show the, the outline on the map because it's very hard to tell where the actual words are showing, and uh, that's just an easy fix as well. Um, now, this one is actually probably the most controversial on this post, apparently, because it's the only thing people really disagreed with me with. Um, so, I said potions should just have their own slot and should just refill on backing. They're super strong early game, so everyone will buy them anyway. Right now in Smite 2, basically, for, for the first 5 to 10 minutes, you're just buying potions on back anyway, because they're super, super strong. And they mess with your item slots too much. They also take up your actual item slots. And depending on when you buy them, the order in which you buy them, it'll either be F for your, your health potion, or C, or G, or something, if you have an active item before that. So I think you should separate separate them, make them free. That's how it is in Predecessor. The potions are free, and they're not OP past the early game. They're just strong early game. Um, if you're going to buy them anyway, I just don't think that's like a fun mechanic. In like People have said economy of buying potions, but I just do not think it's impactful whatsoever. And you can take that, take the fact that you're making that free, because... Hyrus already wants to simplify a lot of the boring aspects of the game, such as beads, because they're taking out actives or uh, relic choices. Um, so I think that you can do it with that mechanic. 
simplify that aspect of the game. Maybe it slightly, very slightly lowers the skill cap based on economy or whatever, which I don't even really think is that big of a deal. But add it somewhere else. Maybe there's a relics. Maybe there's back to starter items. You can choose different starter items. It'll just um, especially help with that. And I just think it's, I don't know. I just think separating them just makes it a lot less confusing that there's an actual con consumable slot. Now, the argument people had was that um, for controller players, um, there's just going to be too many uh, button combinations that you have to click. No matter what, even though you don't really buy potions past the early game anyway or need them, you're going to have active items then. Um, the problem with that still is that there's still going to be there's still going to be a need for six active item combinations or buttons plus the uh, consumable slot. But like I said, I think it could just push the prioritization over for the so if you buy potions early game, it's a really easy button to click. But by your fifth or sixth item, if you have a lot of active items, it'll simply make your potion pop something obscure. Like for controller, left trigger B plus right stick, something super obscure because it doesn't matter. There's no mid combat potions that you have to use late game on controller so it could just push the prior over add the uh the the easy to hit active item combinations at the beginning so yeah hopefully that makes sense but anyway i mean i'm not too sold on this one and it, i know i understand why people maybe don't want them to be free I, it works in predecessory and i like it honestly um you know worry about the actual things maybe make the builds a little bit more in depth so you don't have to worry about potions as much stuff like that so anyway already went over that one not enough. I'm beating a dead horse here with a hammer, guys. But make Combat Blink the default relic. I can guarantee the fun factor people have been talking about would have been 100 times better with this change alone. And I think you should at least experiment with it for at least a weekend. Do a flash test with it. Whatever. Like, I've already gone over this so many times, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. But a lot of people said this weekend wasn't fun. It was boring. They got, after, got off after a few games. I personally didn't think that i actually had a lot of fun but that was kind of the general consensus at least from what i saw on social media and stuff which is skewed and biased and it's not the representation of everybody that's played but again if that's the overall feel at least add some fun factor to it beads is so boring combat blink would be so fun make it a 300 second cooldown people ask talking about how it's not going to be balanced i promise you you are thinking too short-sighted about it i i just think you can really make it work i promise you i think you can make it work I have 50,000 hours in this game. Not really, but you know what I mean. Anyway, I already beat a dead horse there enough with that hammer, so we continue on. I think they need... This is more ambitious, so we're starting to get to that point where... Um, well, these are just basically ideas, um, and they're more ambitious, so you can't right away do this, probably. It'll take some time, but I think they need to make the map and the art more dynamic so they can add to the lore of Smite and while you're fighting. For example, maybe based on gold lead, the chaos or order side side starts to creep over to the other so if you have a substantial gold lead on chaos side 75 percent of the map is now fiery and scary like the you know the style and the theme of chaos side and vice versa if you know if the order side has a has a lead a substantial gold lead then 75 percent of the map is now like in order it's nice and bright and things are like flowers are blossoming and stuff like that um and if maybe a chaos side gets fire it sets them aflame because you know they're chaotic like their whole body is there's like goku basically now Whereas the order side, they, they get fire, they harness it around their belt, or maybe they put on like a helmet or something like that because they're, you know, they're, it's the order side. Um, this just gives a little bit of personality and like flavor to the game and makes it feel like you're actually playing a god in this scenario where it's chaos versus order. And they're just, it just ups the stakes a little bit, I think. And uh, um, you could just also make the art and everything on the map more dynamic. You could add a, add a bunch to that. This is just one small idea. Um, you could do the same with other objectives, with certain camps. Um, yeah, so I think that's uh, something that they can maybe look towards in the future. And they're on Unreal Engine 5, so I think they very easily have the capabilities of doing something like this now. Um, a lot easier than they did in Smite 1. So, um, yeah. If you have any other ideas when it comes to this, you know, throw them down in the comments or come to my stream and talk about them. Um, I also think there's got to be some sort of role designation starters, like a starter items like I talked about before, or at the very least, have passives when you load in. It will get difficult for new players if there isn't, especially for the sake of jungle. It doesn't feel like there's a jungle role right now. Everybody can clear camps the same as the quote-unquote jungler. Um, it just is weird. Same thing with like support. I think supports kind of need a starter. Um, they kind of always have in Smite 1. You can maybe balance around it. But like I said, you could also do even a passive. So like... Everybody chooses their role anyway. Everybody's forced to play their role. You get reported if you don't. There is roles, right? That's just the meta. It's always, always how it's, it's all, it's hat. 
It's how it always has been. Jesus, can't speak. Um, and it, like I said, you get reported if you don't play it. So why not just when you load into the game, you load in with your roll passive. So like, like let's say the jungle roll passive is basically just Boombas. And the soul lane roll passive is like uh, a Warrior's Axe type uh, passive or something like that. Like you could just do that so it doesn't affect the builds. And it, it makes it really easy for new players as well because they know when they're playing their role, when they're selecting their role, they're also getting the roll passive alongside it. Um, and it could just be a very small passive, but it just helps delineate a little bit more about where people are supposed to go, what they're supposed to do, and it helps new players a lot. So, um, And if you don't want to do the passive thing, just throw in starters because I think starter items, not starter items with upgrades, even though I love starter upgrades, I'm kind of confused why people are so against it. But regardless, even if you don't want to do that, just at least have starter items that you sell late game to replace with the sixth item. Um, anyway... Next up, we have prioritized damage recap screen and in-game chat. This basically just means that I think Kairos should um, have their programmers and stuff work on that, like prioritize it big time, because it'll help a lot with testing the game out. It's very hard right now to understand items and stuff like that, but you can't, you can't even see what's killing you or what's doing the majority of the damage and all that, especially with int and strength and all that. Like, we want to be able to learn. So this is a very important aspect that the game currently doesn't have that I think they should really prioritize, um, and that'd be great. And then I said to make the TP slightly more accessible as well, because right now they're just a little bit out of the way. It takes so long to actually get to that other side, having to walk around and do all that. So I think maybe just um, making that wall between the TP and the lane just slightly smaller would help a little bit with that, make it a little bit uh, faster. So uh, <laughs> what's up, Sam? Um, but yeah, I think that's the end, right? Yeah. Um, some people replied, and Max said, was being a troll. F dot said a lot of I love a lot of these points that blink and he beads, bro. I don't understand this. I'm not gonna go into it again and we beat a dead horse here again, 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 but he says you need beads. I do not think you need beads. Combat blink is almost probably more useful than beads in a lot of scenarios, even against CC. So I just don't, I don't really get that one. Um Greg, my man, says I can agree anymore with this. Let's go. Oh, look at this guy. Who is this guy? A flash test with combat playing default is required, in my opinion. I agree with genetics. At least a flash test with it. I think you could do a whole weekend with it. I think you could even just decide that you're going to do it, and from here on out, that's just how it's going to be, and the game would be better. Um, Roll stories that you sell late game are a must at this point. I agree with that. I don't think they're a must. You could do the pa the passive thing as well, but... Um, I can't read what Mark said because he says a bad word. Anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So that's kind of what I think they should do um, in the time being to make Smite 2 better, to maybe give people a better outlook on the game, make it more fun so the next weekend everybody has a good time, they're positive about it, um, and they don't get bored. You know, I think that's the most important thing. People need to be having fun with the alpha right now, at the very least for like two days on the weekend or whatever. Um, but yeah, basically that's basically all I got. If you uh, have any ideas for what they can do to improve Smite 2 to make it more fun, to add some spice. Oh, and again, like I said, here's the doc. I don't want to. I don't want to spoil you guys on YouTube. I'm not going to open it, but the doc is right here um, in my other tab. We are uh, we're cooking up some god changes just for fun. It's literally just for fun. I don't have like an inside with high res that they're going to use any of these changes. Just doing it for fun and maybe giving some inspiration to some devs along the way who knows um but yeah so if you guys want to help us out with that then come out to the stream and pitch your god ideas to us and it'll be fun we're having a good time doing it so yeah that's basically it hope you guys enjoyed the video learned a thing or two like i said let me know down in the comments if you have any ideas and i'll see you in the next one peace out